Hello, friends, and welcome to Kurt Berglund's Baseball World. And it's time for another Here's the Pitch All-Star Collector Set game. Sets numbers 33 and 34 are on my tabletop today. And they are available right now from my friend Dominic at Here's the Pitch. If you would like the latest Here's the pitch, order forms, flyers, roster sheets for the all-star collector sets. Send me an email at berglund.curt at yahoo.com and I will send that right out to you. Uh, all the ordering information you need, Dominic's complete inventory, everything's on there. The game's a great value and a lot of fun. Um, and we're going to have a good time today with a couple of very interesting teams that Dominic has put together. Before we get to today's starting lineups, don't forget to check out channel membership. In the description for this video is the link. Uh, with channel membership, you get discounts on the secondary store. You get access to members-only exclusive videos and a free gift for me every month. You cannot beat that with a 2 by 4 my friends. All right, so it's time for Here's the Pitch Baseball. Let's get to today's starting lineups. When you order Dominic's All-Star Collector Sets, you get a nifty cover card. Looking like this, here's Oriole Park at Camden Yards next to Baltimore's Memorial Stadium across from Earl Weaver's Tomato Patch. And there's my friend Dominic on the center field hitting background, which is probably going to make somebody like, I don't know, Joe Adcock cranky in today's game. You also get with the collector sets a roster card that looks like this. Lists all the players that you've got, and I love them. Because I make moves during my games. Now watch, we'll go through this one and I probably won't even use a pinch hitter. But uh, everybody's listed here. You don't have to rifle through your card deck. And then you get nice and big and clear fonts with plenty of use of color on the cards themselves. This is for the visiting team today. This is set 33. And the home team is set 34. Uh, there's the cover card for 34, and here is the roster card for set number 34. All right, so with all this said, let's get to today's lineups for the visiting set 33, Bip Roberts. Now people, I don't know. I, don't, I think Bip Roberts is kind of forgotten, but I think he was a pretty amazing ball player. Uh, he leads off in left field. Mark Loretta, one of my all-time favorites. Uh, bat second at second base. Sean Green, who had four bombs against the Brewers, and I'm still, I still have PTSD from this one. He's in, uh, right field, batting third. Joe Adcock bats fourth. He'll be at first base. Babe Herman bats fifth. He'll be in center. Woody English, bat sixth. He'll be at third base. Virgil Davis, bat seventh. He'll catch. And Dick Bartell, bats eighth. Uh, and plays shortstop. On the mound, it's Doug Drabeck. You know him, you love him. From the Pittsburgh Pirates and Houston Astros. He was a Yankee for a little while. I think he came up with the Yankees. Let's see what kind of pitcher hitting card he gets today. He gets a hitting card one. All right. And there is a look at his pitching card for today's game. He was in 1990, uh, 22 and six with a 276 earned run average. All right, for set 34, um, George Harper is going to lead off and play left field. Here's a fun fact for you: George Harper is actually Bryce Harper's grandfather. 
No, he's not really. But isn't that a good story? Try that one on your friends. Uh, Travis Jack Hill, which Harper leads off in left field. Travis Jackson will bat second and play short. Andy Pafko, another favorite of mine, bats third and plays third base. Bobby Mercer, a favorite of mine, bats fourth and plays center. Dave, don't call me Dale Robertson, bats fifth and plays right field. Gus Sir bats um, sixth and plays first base. Solly Hemus uh, bats seventh and plays second. And Frankie Hayes will bat eighth. He's behind the plate. On the mound for set number 34 is another guy I think is forgotten, but boy, could he pitch. Arm trouble got him, of course, but boy, when he was healthy, lights out. You were not going to win the game. He will use a uh, hitter card two today. And we'll take a look at his pitching card. In 1990, he was 20 and 6 with a 292 earned run average. All right. So we are ready to go with some here's the pitch baseball when we do here's the pitch baseball we use the here's the pitch score sheet that you get with your order and we need three d6s we read them in red white and blue order and that's how we the red die tells us the uh hitter card or the pitcher card and then these two dice are combined to give us a number in the yellow column and it's just that easy. So let's get ready for some Here's the Pitch Baseball. Biff Roberts leads off against Ramon Martinez. And the delivery from Martinez is going to be a power chart check to center field right off the bat. Let's see what Ramon's uh, modifier to the power chart is. Is a minus four. And it's going to be a base hit for Biff Roberts to lead off this ball game. And coming to the plate now will be Mark Loretta. Ramon Martinez, the stretch, and the pitch to Loretta is going to be a foul ball. Next delivery as Martinez stretches and delivers is going to be a chopper on the infield. Over Martinez's head, Sally Hemas tries to make a play, but there's no play to be made. Loretta reaches with an infield single, and there's two on to start this ball game. And here comes the aforementioned Sean Green. Oh, my God. His, his four home runs in that game still have not landed. That's how bad the pitcher, the Brewer pitching was that day. Well, actually, for several seasons, but we won't talk about that. <laughs> oh, my God. All right, the pitch, the pitch to Green from Martinez is hit to center. And if I can hold on to the dice, we're going to find out what happens. And there is one down. Uh, Mer uh, Mercer makes the catch. Now the question on America's mind is, is Bip Roberts going to try and tag in advance? And I think the answer to that question is going to be yes. Um, so let's double check Robert's speed. He is a seven. And Bobby Mercer, I believe, has a throwing arm of a zero. If I'm not mistaken, yes, he does. So, Bip Roberts tags, and he's going to be safe on a roll of two to nine and 12. And sure enough, he's in there. He tags up and advances to third. Set 33 has runners at the corners with one out in the first. And it brings up Big Joe Adcock. The set 34 infield is going to play for a double play here. Ramon Martinez, the stretch and the delivery is a 525. And that's going to be a power chart check to right field. 
Minus four for Martinez. Adcock with a 614 is going to be an 81. Minus four is 77. And it's going to be extra bases for Joe Adcock. Uh, Robert scores easily. And Loretta's going to stop at third with one out. It's one nothing set 33 in the top of the first inning. Here's Babe Herman. Martinez, the stretch, he delivers. He needs a strikeout is what he needs here. And instead, he walks Herman and the bases are loaded. Double play depth again for the infield with Woody English, the old Cubs infielder coming up. Martinez, the stretch, and the pitch to Woody. Hey, struck him out and he made him look sick. There's two gone in the top of the first. Martinez gets his strikeout, and now he's after Spud Davis. Uh, Martinez, the stretch, and the pitch to Davis is a 626, and that's going to be hit to short. Chance for Travis Jackson. And Jackson is going to make the play to first base to Gus Sir, and that will retire the side in the first inning. But set 33 gets a run on three hits. The problem is they leave three. We go to the bottom of the first. It's one nothing. set 33, and Doug Drabeck has a little bit of a cushion. George, don't call me Bryce Harper, comes to the plate. Drabeck kicks and deals. It's a 364, and that's going to be ball one, and a chance for a rare play. No rare play. Next delivery is uh, to Harper is strike three swinging. He got him on that Doug Drabeck overhand curve ball, and George Harper didn't come within three feet of it. Here's <laughs> Here's Travis Jackson with nobody on. Drabeck kicks and deals. And that's ball four. Travis Jackson trots down to first base. One on, one out for the set 34. And Andy Pafko comes up. Handy, Andy. The stretch by Drabeck and the pitch to Pafko is a 433. And that's going to be hit to short. Uh, Dick Bartell will uh, glove it. He's going to go to Loretta for one and the relay to Adcock is in time for a rally killing soul crushing 6-4-3 double play turn by set 33 and that'll bring us to the second inning with your score set 33 1 and set 34 nothing. It's Dick Bartell, Doug Drabeck, and Bip Roberts coming up in the top of the second inning. Ramon Martinez to Dick Bartell, and we've got another action chart check. Ramon may not have his good stuff here today. 245 is a 59. That'll be a base hit for Dick Bartell, and it's going to bring up Doug Drabeck. And I think that's going to bring up a, an opportunity to give Mr. Drabeck the bunt sign. So let's see how that goes here. Ramon Martinez, the stretch and the delivery. And Drabeck missed the pitch. And Dick Bartell is going to try to steal. He's a little too far off first base, anticipating that bunt getting down. And Drabeck didn't do it. His steal rating is a three. The hold is a minus two. Ouch. And the catcher's throwing arm will be a plus one. And I got zeros coming in through my... It's the Stuka. The Stuka. Uh, coming in through my window. So it is a... He'll be a two on the stolen base attempt. And that's not going to be pretty. A two to four, he steals it, and he's shot down from here to Okoboji on the steal attempt. So with one out now, and Drabeck still at the plate, Ramon Martinez kicks and deals, and that's a 61. That's a comebacker to Ramon. 
He takes a couple steps toward Gus Sir and throws him the ball for out number two. Bip Roberts up again. Got a hit in the first inning. The pitch here is another hit for Bip Roberts right through the box. Two out single for him brings up Loretta. The stretch and the delivery from Martinez to Loretta is hit to third. Chance for Andy Pafko on the, I believe he's at two. I got to double check. Yes, he is. It's popped up. Handy Andy in fair territory is going to make the catch for out number three. So set 33 gets a couple of base hits, but they can't score anybody. They leave a man, and we go to the bottom of the second with your score, one nothing. Drabeck nursing that 1-0 lead. It's Mercer, Robertson, and Sir coming up 4-5-6 in inning number two. Drabeck kicks and deals. 2-52 is to left field by Mercer. Bip Roberts is there, and he's got it for out number one. Dale, Dave, don't, no, I'm doing it. Dave, don't call me Dale Robertson, comes to the plate. The windup and the delivery from Drabeck is a 426, and that's hit to right and deep. Did Dave Robertson get it? It is gone down that right field line, and we got a tie game at one. They're going to be making Dave Robertson pee in a cup after this game. I can promise you that. They're going to be muscled up on that one. Gus Sir is coming to the plate. And there's one out. Drabeck kicks and deals. It's a 461, and that is hit to left. Bip Roberts is there for out number two. Sally Hemus comes up now with nobody on base. The old Cardinal infielder. The wind and the delivery from Drabeck. Taken for a strike. Might have a rare play. We don't have a rare play. The next delivery from Drabeck is a 254. And that's hit by Hemus to second. Uh, Mark Loretta gloves it to his left, cuts it off from going into right field, and throws to Joe Adcock for out number three. That will end the second inning. The set 34 ties it, though, on a bomb from Dave Robertson. And uh, they're checking him for juice right now between innings. They think the Roids may be a factor for one Mr. Dave Robertson. And to me, three words come to mind. Guilty, guilty, <laughs> guilty. All right. The meat of the order for set 33 is coming up in the third. Sean Green is first, and that's a 354 for him, and he draws a walk. Joe Adcock doubled home, set 33's only run of the game back in the first. Ramon Martinez, the stretch and the delivery to him is a 246. And that's drilled down the left field line. Bryce Harper's grandpa has to go dig it out of there. Sean Green around second. He's no speed demon, so they're going to hold him up at third. Adcock with his second double. Of the ball game. And the infield's going to move in at the corners now for Babe Herman, if that's his real name. The stretch by Martinez to, and the delivery by Martinez to Herman is a power chart check. This is to left. Babe Herman goes the other way. A 214 is going to be a base hit for Herman to left. Harper gets it on a hop and makes a nice throw home. Cut off by Pafko. Green scores. It's 2 1, set 33 with Adcock at third now. And so they've got runners at the corners with nobody out. 
And you know what? I think that's going to start action in the set 34 bullpen. So we are going to consult our set 34 roster card. And we're going to get double barreled action going in the bullpen because that's just the way I like it. Uh, Mike Caldwell and Richard Dotson. Two guys I watched pitch a lot are going to start throwing in the set 34 bullpen behind Ramon Martinez. All right, Woody English comes to the plate. The stretch by Martinez, they're going to play in at the corners, and the delivery is a 246, and that's ball four. The bases are dripping with set 33 base runners. Nobody out. Ramon needs one of those strikeouts again. And Spud Davis, pretty good hitting catcher, comes to the plate. Uh, Cardinals, Phillies, and I think he was with another team too, but I can't remember it off the top of my head. If you do, put it in the comments. Uh, Cardinals, Phillies, and I think there was somebody else. Uh, Martinez, the stretch and the pitch to the 0-for-1 Davis is a 151. That's to center. Bobby Mercer is under it, and he is going to make the catch. Holding it third is Adcock. Yes, not deep enough to bring Joe home, so there's one away. Dick Bartell comes to the plate. And it's always tempting to try and get one because they got uh, Doug Drayback on deck. And they're going to try some shenanigans. Ramon Martinez, the stretch, the delivery to Bartel. And he squares to bunt. Haven't done a squeeze bunt for a while. Let's see what happens here. Bartel uh, bunts it out in front of home plate. But getting a good jump off third is Adcock. Hayes gets it and fires down to first. The squeeze bunt works, and it's 3-1. Three, 3-4 one. Three, on the squeeze with an RBI for Bartell. The runners move up to second and third now with two outs for Drabeck. 3-1 here in the top of the third. Martinez, the stretch and the pitch to the pitcher, is a 31-1. He walked the pitcher. Yikes. Well... I want to get through this inning because he's due up second in the bottom of the inning. So I'm going to give him one more batter. Bip Roberts comes to the plate. The bases are dripping. Herman at third, English at second, and Drabeck at first. For Martinez, the stretch, the pitch is a 651, and that's to left. Fly ball to Harper. He's got it on a nice running catch for out number three. But in the third, they get two more. On two base hits, they leave them loaded. We go to the bottom of three, and it's 3-1, set 33. Doug Drabeck will face Frankie Hayes, and then maybe a pinch hitter for Martinez in the top of the order with Harper. Drabeck winds and deals to Frankie Hayes, and that's a 323, and that's a base hit for Hayes. And I think it's time to go to the bench. So we're going to see a pinch hitter for Ramon Martinez, who ends his day after three innings of work. He allowed five hits. He walked one, two, three, four batters. He struck out one and allowed three runs. They're all earned. So... We're going to see who's on the bench for a pinch hitter um, from set 34. Look at our roster card. Doug Drabeck, of course, a right-handed pitcher. So we're going to go to the guy who's famous for what he didn't do. And that's Dale Mitchell. And, of course, Dale Mitchell is famous because he made the last out as a pinch hitter in Don Larson's perfect game in the World Series. But he was actually a very good player. 
and the pitch was outside. Or was it low? I can't remember. I remember in the video, Dale Mitchell looks back at the ump like, are you crazy? And the ump had already run to Yonker, was already running to Yonkers to get off the field. All right, so Drabeck, the stretch with Hayes at first. The pitch to Dale Mitchell is a 644, and that's hit to second. Mark Loretta. Mark Loretta. Uh, gloves it. He goes to Dick Bartell for one in the relay to Adcock one more time. Is a rally killing and soul crushing 4 6 3 double play. Turned by our friends on set 33. Brings up George Harper with nobody on. Drabeck kicks and deals, and that's to right and deep. Harper just crushed it. He's not even moving from home plate yet. He's watching it sail into the stands. Yeah, they did that in 1927, didn't they? A lot of posing after you crush one. It's gone, and set 34 makes it a one-run game with their second bomb of the day. All right, a little more roid testing is going to have to go on here, and I'm thinking three words, my friends. Guilty, guilty, guilty. Travis Jackson comes up with two outs. The pitch to Stonewall. Hey, struck him out. Drabeck humped up on that fastball for his second strikeout of the day. But in the third, set 34 gets a run on a couple of hits. They don't leave anybody. We go to the fourth, and it's a 3-2 ball game. We're going to get a new pitcher. Coming in for set 34, and that's going to be our old friend, right-hander Richard Dotson, who was not a cure for wildness, let's just say. Richard Dotson could walk a few guys, but he hummed that fastball. Let's look at him in 1983, 22-7 with a 323 ERA. He struck out 137 and walked 106. He's Pete Vukovic with a fastball. Uh, all right, so Loretta will lead it off against Dotson. He'll be followed by Green and Adcock. The windup and the delivery from Dotson is a 6.55. And hey, struck him out with the gas. One down, Sean. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. He can't strike out on a pitcher card. Just kidding. That's what the blue letters here mean. He only strikes out on his own card. So let's see what happens here when we re-roll. It's a 366. Could be a hit. Could be a foul ball. It's going to be a hit for Loretta. A base hit for Mark Loretta leading off the fourth. Sean Green comes up. Dots in the stretch, the pitch to him. Hey, struck out green. Now he got his strikeout with the cheese. One on, one out, and Joe Adcock comes up. Mr. Double today in the game. We got a good game going. It's 3-2, set 33 in the front right now. It is hit on the ground to short. This is Jackson. He is going to go to... Hemus for one, and the relay to Sir is in time. They double up Joe Adcock on a rally crushing, rally killing, soul crushing 6 4 3 double play. And set 34 finally throws up a zero. We go to the bottom of four, and it's a 3 2 game. Drabeck has given up a couple of gopher balls. And we've almost got our results back from the lab, checking the uh, Robertson and Harper blood work for, you know, the juice. Here's the pitch from Drabeck. Is a power chart check to center. Drabeck's adjustment is a minus six. Did Andy Pafko get this one? It's a 656, 
And no, he did not. That's a base hit for Pafko, though, to lead off the bottom of the fourth. Here comes Mercer. He can take you deep. The stretch by Drabeck and the pitch to Bobby is a base hit to right. Drops in front of Sean Green. Paf goes around second, heading to third. He will get there. Green's throw comes into second. And set 34 has runners at the corners with nobody out. That will get action going in the set 33 bullpen. Let's check out the roster card. Hmm. They're going to do double-barreled action as well. It's going to be John Candelaria and Chris Carpenter. Uh, different generations, but both mighty tough pitchers. They're going to start throwing in the set 33 bullpen. Lefty-righty, double-barreled action. All right. So here's Dave Robertson, double play depth for the infield. The pitch from Drabeck is a 325 and a base hit. Uh, yeah, just over the reach of Mark Loretta. Scoring is Pafco, and we're tied at three. Mercer stops at second. We have two on with nobody out for Gus Sir. Dave Robertson is having a day. He's also rumored to have gang affiliation. Notice that the hat is a little bit off center there. Something's going on. Dave Robertson seems like a very troubled individual in 1916. He's got a roid connection to beat the band. <laughs> They're doing his blood work in the lab right now. I can promise you that. Here's Gus Sir. Two on, nobody out. Drabeck, the stretch and the delivery is ball four. The bases are loaded with nobody out, and that bullpen is working with considerably more enthusiasm. Here comes Sally Hemus with a chance to put set 34 on top. We got a slugfest going early here. Drabeck, the stretch. He needs a strikeout is what he needs. The pitch to Hemus is not a strikeout. It's a base hit to right. Drops in front of Sean Green. Mercer scores. It's a 4-3 game. Robertson stops at second. Sir stops at... Robertson stops at third. Sir stops at second. He misses on with a single. There's still nobody out. And Frankie Hayes comes to the plate. That's going to be the end of the day for Doug Drabeck as we're going to get... The Cardinal right-hander, Chris Carpenter, on here in the bottom of the fourth. So Drabeck goes three-plus innings. Doesn't get any further than Ramon Martinez did, actually, now that you mention it. And I know that you were mentioning it. Mentioning it. Um, all right, so... Frankie Hayes comes up. Carpenter, uh, first of all, Drabeck goes three-plus innings, allows seven hits. Two of them were bombs. He walked two, and he struck out two. He allowed four runs. They're all earned, but he's got three more guys that are his responsibility on the bases. Chris Carpenter in 05 was 21-5 and five with a 283 earned run average. He, a good one. And still going, of course. The pitch from Carpenter to Hayes is a 3.33, and that's hit to short. Dick Bartell gloves it. He's going to go to Loretta for one and back to Adcock for a rally-killing, soul-crushing 6.43 double play. Robertson scores from third base. Sir goes to third. It's now 5.3, said 34 with the lead, and George... Oh, no, right. That's Richard Dotson will come to the plate. And he will bat. He's going to bat uh, because he's got a two-run lead now. So he might vulture himself a victory here. Let's see what kind of hitting card he's going to use today. That's going to be an 11. And that will be card number three. 
So he's going to use card three. Richard Dotson comes up. Only one man on, but it's Gus Sir at third base. Carpenter, the stretch and the delivery to him is a ground ball to second. Mark Loretta charges and flips to Joe Adcock, four out, number three. But in the fourth inning, set 34 picks up three runs on four base hits. We go to the fifth with your score, set 34-5 and set 33-3. Three, three. A 5-3 ball game in the top of the fifth. Richard Dotson is out for his Second inning of work, he'll face Herman English and Davis in the fifth. Dotson kicks and deals a 656. And hey, struck him out with the bender. Dotson had a nice little slider, too, that was good. And gave Babe Herman all sorts of trouble on that at bat. Two down or one down, and Woody English comes up. And this will be a power chart check to left. Dotson is a minus four. A 656 will be a base hit for English. Look at Woody English with 214 hits. Yeah, it was 1930, but I don't care. 214 hits is a lot of hits. Spud Davis comes to the plate. Dotson the stretch and the pitch to Spud. Is strike three called? He watched that one go by like a barn on the side of the road, and there's two down in the top of the fifth, and Dick Bartell comes up. Chris Carpenter would be next. Dots on the stretch, and the pitch to Bartell is hit to first. This is Gus Sir. He's going to take it to the bag unassisted for out number three. So Dotson has definitely righted the ship since entering the ball game. We are halfway through this one and set 34 is leading 5 to 3. Chris Carpenter is out for his second inning of work. He'll face the top of the order. It's George Harper. We had a bomb in the third and they're still checking his blood work. We're waiting for a call from the lab. All right, Carpenter winds and deals. 444 will be strike three on a bender. Harper gave him the old jelly leg on that one. First strikeout for Carpenter, and there's one down in the fifth. Travis Jackson comes up. He's 0 for 1. The pitch to him is a 462. That'll be to left field. Bip Roberts coming on and makes the catch for out number two. Andy Pafko is one for two. There's nobody on. Carpenter kicks and delivers to Pafko, and that's a fly ball to center. Herman is under it. He's got it for out number three, and that, believe it or not, is our first one, two, three inning in the ballgame. We go to the six with your score, set 33, five, and set, I'm sorry, it's not true. Set 34, five, and set 33, three. We're going to get a pinch hitter now for Chris Carpenter, who gave two innings of work, uh, struck out a man, and that was it for his ledger. George Orta is going to be the pinch hitter. Another White Sox. White Sox versus White Sox here. Orto will be followed by Roberts and Loretta. 9-1-2 in the top of the sixth. Dotson kicks and deals to George. And it's a 241. And hey, struck him out with that hopping fastball. Fourth strikeout for Dotson in two and a third innings. He's bringing it today. And Bip Roberts comes to the plate. Um, here we go. Trying to get organized. Not easy. Not easy. Okay, here we go. Roberts up two for three today. 523 will be a power chart check to center field. Bobby Mercer on the run. And 241 is going to be a base hit. For Bip Roberts, his third of the day. Brings up Mark Loretta. 
And, oh, we're not going to send Roberts. Not with that hold rating. All right, Loretta, the, the batter now. Roberts at first, one man out. Dots in the stretch, and the delivery is a 456. That is hit to third. It's a chance for Pafco. Andy Pafco uh, makes a good play to his left. He fires to Hemus at second. The relay to Sir in time for a rally killing, soul crushing, around the horn and inning ending. 5 4 3 double play to get Richard Dotson out of just a little bit of a little something that could turn into something, but didn't. We go to the bottom of the sixth, and your score is set 34, winning 5-3. New pitcher coming for set 33, and that's going to be John Candelaria, who had a long and excellent career with the Pirates and the Dodgers, a few other clubs, I believe. And he'll face Mercer, Robertson, and Sir in the bottom of the sixth. Candelaria in 1977 was 20 and 5 with a 2.34 earned run average. All right, Mercer's one for two. The pitch from Candelaria is a 643, and that is pulled to first. Joe Adcock is going to take it to the bag unassisted for out number one. Dave Robertson comes to the plate. Candelaria wines and deals. And, hey, strikes out Robertson, who's still concerned about that blood work coming back. And the roid check. Just take a look at him. Three words, my friends. Guilty, guilty, guilty. All right. Gus Sir comes up with nobody on. Candelaria kicks and deals. 532 will be pulled to second. Mark Loretta gloves it and throws to Joe Adcock for out number three. So one, two, three, six. We go to the seventh with set 34 leading this one, five to three. The meat of the order is coming up against Richard Dotson in what will likely be his last inning of work. Sean Green, Joe Adcock, and Babe Herman. Dotson winds and deals, and he walks Sean Green. Control could be a problem for Richard Dotson. Here's Adcock. The stretch, there's been base runners all over the place for, really, for both teams, but especially for 33 a lot of double plays, but that's because there's base runners everywhere. 251 is ball four and another walk. That's going to get the bullpen going for set 34. We'll take another look at our lineup card. And uh, I got some right-handers coming up. So Wayne Garland is going to start throwing and... Mike Caldwell right alongside him. More lefty-righty, double-barreled action. All right, coming to the plate now, representing the go-ahead run, is Babe Herman. He hit 35 bombs in 1930, but then again, who didn't? No, I'm just kidding. Still a lot of bombs. I don't care. I don't care. 1930 or not, 241 hits and 35 bombs is a, it's a bunch. Dots in the stretch and the pitch to Herman. 156 is going to be drilled into the gap in right center field and deep. It's going to get through there. Green will score from second. They're waving Joe Adcock around from first. The relay is coming from Mercer to Hemis, home to, Hay, or to third base. To Pafco, but it's late, and Babe Herman has a game-tying two-run triple. Woody English comes to the plate, and the infield moves in. The stretch by Dotson and the delivery is ball four to English. Two are on, men at the corners with nobody out for Spud Davis. 
And that's going to do it for Richard Dotson, who went three plus innings. He allowed four hits. His problem, say it with me, oh, those bases on balls. He walked three, struck out four. He allowed two runs. He is now in no decision land. But he could lose it if Wayne Garland allows these inherited runners to score and 34 makes it stand up. Garland in 76 was 20 and 7 with a 267 earned run average. He's going to face Spud Davis, and the infield is in. A stretch by Garland, and the pitch to Spud is launched to center and deep. Back goes Mercer. It is off the wall. Herman scores. English goes to third. They're going to stop him there with nobody out. It's a 6 5 ball game. Set 33. Takes the lead, and Wayne Garland takes the role of arsonist as he throws gas on the fire. There's still nobody out. The infield will remain in. Here is Bartell. On deck is Candelaria. He may not bat, however. The pitch from Garland to Bartell is hit to short. Travis Jackson is a two. Um, second and third. The runner on third holds. The batter is out at first base. So Jackson will make the throw to Gus Sir, and that's going to hold Woody English at third, and there's one man out. We're going to get a pinch hitter now for Candelaria. They're going to go for the jugular here in the top of the seventh. Looking at our roster card. And it's going to be former Cub. Who couldn't throw a lick, but he could hit the ball. Riggs Stevenson. So Stevenson hits for Candelaria. Candelaria goes an inning, and that's it with a strikeout. The candy man is done. All right, Garland the stretch. The infield stays in. The delivery to Stevenson is a 242, and that's going to be to center field. Under it is Mercer. Let's see what happens here. We have runners at second and third. He has a zero, so Mercer's going to make the catch, and the runners are going to hold. Riggs Stevenson doesn't get it deep enough to bring anybody home, and that will bring up the top of the order with Bip Roberts. Garland is a good pitch from getting out of the mess. The pitch to Bip is a 625, and that is hit to first. Gus Sir. Takes it to his right and feeds Garland covering for out number three. So Garland allows a leadoff double, but, and gives up the lead, but then puts out the fire. Set 33 gets three runs in the seventh, and it's all on two hits, three walks. Contribute to the scoring. It's time to stretch them out with your score. Set 33, now leading six to five. Scott Erickson comes on to pitch for set 33. Uh, remember the 1991 Twins World Championship team? He was 20 and 8 with a 3.18 earned run average. He's a right hander, and he'll face the bottom third of the set 34 order in the bottom of the seventh. It's Sally Hemus, uh, Frankie Hayes, and then a pinch hitter. Uh, coming up for Wayne Garland. We'll see who that turns out to be. Erickson winds and deals to Hemus, and that's a drive to right and deep. Back goes Green, warning track, wall, and we're tied at six. Yikes. We got quite a game here. Frankie Hayes comes to the plate. Scott Erickson hung a bender, and Hemus lost it for him. 
Can I just say a few words, my friends, about body positivity? Blimp. <laughs> really? All right, here we go. Scott Erickson uh, moving into the on-deck circle for set 34 to bat for... Uh, why is my brain not working? Uh, Wayne Garland. That's who it is. It's going to be uh, Brian Roberts. But he's on deck. Frankie Hayes is going to bat first. And then it'll be George Harper. The pitch to Hayes is a 556. And that's going to be a power chart check. Erickson is a minus six. 453 is a base hit for Frankie Hayes. Roberts comes to the plate now to bat for Garland. We will see if Roberts is going to try and lay down a bunt. Uh, because Hayes represents the go-ahead run at this moment. The stretch by Erickson, the pitch to Roberts, and here comes the bunt. Uh, it is bunted too hard, and it's bunted to Adcock. He fires to Bartell for one, and the throwback to Erickson is in time. They double up Roberts, 3-6-1 double play, and that eliminates the base runner for set 34. That would be the go-ahead run, but not anymore. Um, all right, so coming up now is Harper with nobody on. Erickson kicks and deals. 446 is hit to first base. This is Adcock. He's going to take it to the bag. Unassisted for out number three. But in the six, set 34 ties it up on a bomb from Solly Hemus. We go to the eighth, and it's a 6 6 ball game. Mark Loretta, Sean Green, Joe Adcock in the top of the eighth. They need a run to take the lead. The pitch from Forsh. Bob Forsh is your new pitcher, by the by. He was 20 and 7 in 1977. 348 was his earned run average, and he just dealt to Mark Loretta. That's at 242, and that will be to right field. Under it is Robertson. He's got it on a nice running catch for odd number one. Sean Green comes to the plate. Sean is over two. He has walked and scored twice. And Green drills this one down the right field line. It's going to rattle around in the corner. Dave Robertson has to dig it out of there, and Green cruises into second with a one-out double. And speaking of doubles, here comes Joe Adcock, who's got two of them today. Force the stretch. The delivery to Adcock is a base hit to center. Sean Green on his horse. And if you remember what Sean Green ran like, yikes. Around third, he's going to score. The throw is cut off by Gus Sir at the mound, holding Adcock to first base. It is a 7-6 game now. Set 33 takes the lead right back. And Babe Herman comes to the plate. He hit that big triple last inning. Forced the stretch and the pitch to the Babe is to right field. This is Robertson again. He's getting in his road work, and he's got it for out number two. Adcock retreats to first, and Woody English comes to the plate, who's been on base three times. Force the stretch. The pitch to Woody is a ground ball to short, I think. Travis Jackson, yes, goes the short way to Solly Hemus, and that'll retire the side. But in the eighth... In the eighth, set 33 takes a 7-6 lead with a run on two hits, and they leave one. Now, Scott Erickson is going to get another chance to hold the fort. He gagged when he tried to do it last inning, and we'll see if he can do any better this time. Throwing in the bullpen for set 33 is... 
1952 Rookie of the Year, Joe Black, who was a stud in his day. We will see if he's going to be needed here in the eighth. It'll be Jackson, Pafco, and Mercer in the a bottom of the eighth. Erickson kicks and deals. That's a 366. It's to right. Under it is Sean Green, and he's got it for out number one. 7-6. Seven, Set 34. We've had lead changes in the game. He came back to tie it last inning, but coughed up the lead in the top of the eighth. The pitch is a 323, and that will be a base hit to right for Pafco. His second of the day, there's one on with one out, brings the go-ahead run to the plate, and Bobby Mercer. And that's going to uh, see, but he's due up third in the inning. We're going to try and get him through it. Erickson, the stretch, and the pitch to Mercer is a 536. That will be to second. Mark Loretta. Uh, gloves it. He's going to go to Dick Bartell for one, and Mercer beats the rap at first, and so he's on. Pafco retired 4-6. Mercer safe on the fielder's choice. And with two outs, it'll be Robertson. If he reaches, Gus Sir will bat. Erickson, the stretch and the pitch to Robertson is a 336. It's to left. Bip Roberts has it by the foul line for out number three. All right, we've had a good one here. It's going to the ninth. Set 33 is looking for insurance, or as they say in central Illinois, insurance. And Force is out for his second inning of work. He'll face Davis Bartell and a pinch hitter for Erickson. Looks like Joe Black is going to get the ninth inning. Force kicks and deals to Virgil Davis. And Virgil Davis drills it inside the left field line for extra bases. Harper's got to get it. Davis is on with his second double of the day. And Dick Bartell comes to the plate. The stretch by force, the delivery to Bartell is a 455, and this is trouble. It's to left. We've got another power chart check. A 165 is going to be extra bases for Bartell. Davis will score. It's 9-7. to seven. And that's going to do it. Well, they're going to wait for a pinch hitter to be announced for... Uh, Erickson. So we're going to go back to our roster card and we're going to get... Hmm, who are we going to get? We're going to get Nick Etten uh, to pinch hit for Erickson. Left-handed hitting first baseman at the Phillies in the 30s and 40s, and that's why you don't know him. Uh, he's going to hit for Erickson, and that means, indeed, that Joe Black will pitch the bottom of the ninth. Forsh is also done. We're going to stick a fork in him. Um, and the new pitcher to face Etten will be the old Brewer left-hander, Mike Caldwell. So it's a lefty-lefty matchup. Caldwell with the Brewers in 78 was a franchise saver. 22 and 9, 236 earned run average. He threw spitballs, he threw scuff balls, nobody cared. Uh, <laughs> because the Brewers had been so bad for so long. He was a big part of that team. All right, Etten comes to the plate with Bartell at second. Caldwell the stretch and the pitch to him is strike three on one of those sinkers, the Staten Island sinker that George Bamberger taught him. Etten is down in the ninth. Here's, here is not Bartell. Here's Bip Roberts. The stretch by Caldwell and the pitch to Roberts is a 434. That is to second. Hemus. 
Uh, goes to Jackson for one in the relay to Sir. Oh, I'm sorry. That's not true. There's only a runner on second. So he must goes to Sir. And Bartell advances to third with two outs. And here's Loretta. Sean Green would be next. Caldwell, the stretch and the delivery is a 262 and a base hit for Loretta. That guy was so clutch. Uh, that drives home the 10th run of the game. For set 33, they lead 10-7. Sean Green is up. He's one for three. Caldwell, the stretch, and the pitch to Sean is a 256. It's to center. Bobby Mercer has it for out number three. But in the ninth, set 33, he gets two more runs on three hits. They leave one. We go to the bottom of nine with your score. Set 33 on top. Uh, seven, nine, two, seven. No, nine to six. Nine, six. Joe Black coming on for the potential save here in the bottom of the ninth. Scott Erickson done after two innings. He allowed a run, gave up three hits. Joe Black is the new pitcher in 1952, fresh from the Negro Leagues. He was 15 and four with a 2.15 earned run average and 15 saves, even though he didn't know he was getting them. Uh, Sir Hemus and Hayes, or maybe some pinch hitters coming for set 34. They need three runs to stay alive. It's 9-6. The pitch from Black is a 144. It's taken for a ball. We might have a rare play, but we don't. Next delivery from Black is a 315. That's to center. Under it is Babe Herman, and he's got it for out number one. Solly Hemus is two for three, plus he went deep in the seventh, so we're going to let him bat. Black winds and deals. 165 is hit to first. Adcock will take it to the bag. Unassisted for out number two. And it would make... Frankie Hayes, the last chance saloon, but let's get someone else up there. Uh, hey, well, how about this? We'll get Dante Bichette. Chance to keep the game going. 1988, he was loving Coors Field. He's the last chance saloon on deck. Should give the on deck batter. On deck will be Shane Mack for the set 34. Uh, should Bichette reach, Mack will hit. Black kicks and deals. That's a 164, and that's going to be hit to third. Woody English gloves it right by the third base bag and fires across the diamond. Four out number three, and that's your ball game. Let's give you the totals on this one. For the visiting and victorious set 33. Nine runs. 17 base hits, and they committed no errors. Set 34, six runs. They had nine base hits, and they committed no errors. The winning pitcher will be Scott Erickson. The save goes to Joe Black. And the loss is going to get tagged to uh, Forsh. Bob Forsh takes the loss. This is the All-Star Collector Sets for set... 33 and 34. And feel free to email me if you'd like the latest and greatest flyers from Dominic. 
Also, don't forget to check out channel membership. Uh, the link is in the description for this video. I appreciate your support of my channel, my friends. And for now, your final set 33.9, set 34.6. Have a great evening. So long, everybody.